Live from Cleveland, Ohio, it's the Barbecue Central Show. It's the Barbecue Central Show on LA Talk Radio. I'm Greg Rempe. A very good Tuesday evening to you, wherever you may be. Happy to have you. What's up? Hope you're doing well. Got a great show lined up for you. So, you know the drill by now. If you're ready to jump in via telephone, do so at 216-220-0966. If you're a fan of the written word, rather jump in with an email. You're welcome to do that, too, at bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. That's bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. Uh, as I've been saying for the last couple weeks, right up the top of the show, if you're listening here, you're at your computer, probably have your email client up or is uh, readily available. So do this. Go ahead and shoot an email out to five, ten, or 25,000 of your closest friends there in your address book. Send them the link, www.latalkradio.com. Tell them that the Barbecue Central show is on right now, that you're a fan of it. It's fine. It's very entertaining. Sheds a lot of light on barbecue, grilling, outdoor, live fire cooking, all that good stuff and that you would like them to tune in so we can grow the listenership, get the word out about Barbecue Central Radio and the show here on L.A. Talk Radio. As we all know at this point, you can keep up with all the things that are important in the world of barbecue and grilling by going to our website, which is thebbqcentral.com. Also, if you've missed the Barbecue Central show here on L.A. Talk Radio, go ahead, circle back to the archives page by clicking on the Barbecue Central badge on the latalkradio.com homepage. You get a whole list of archive shows. You can download the ones you've missed. Don't forget the Barbecue Central Show was also on iTunes. All you have to do is go and search the the BBQ Central Show on LA Talk Radio, and that will uh, show up on your iTunes store. You can also search me as a host if you're so inclined. Greg Rempe, R E M P E. Here's what's happening on the show tonight. We will be talking with Fred Bernardo, who owns Fred's Music and Barbecue. Kind of a, a neat store. He's got a, a very large retail barbecue outlet on the internet and also at his shop in, I believe it's Schilling or Shillington, Pennsylvania. Uh, but he's also a musician, and he's got guitars and, and all that uh, good kind of music stuff available, too. Two different websites. Uh, so if you're not in that, uh, in that area, neck of the woods, you can hit him up on the uh, World Wide Web and get all of your music and barbecue needs all in uh, pretty much the same place. We'll also be talking with Malcolm Reed a little bit later on from Killer Hogs, and we'll be talking with him about Memphis in May, or uh, which is, I believe, now Memphis Barbecue Network. We'll talk to him about how those competitions function, what they're like, what meat categories they have in them. I know I hit a lot on the uh, Florida Barbecue Association type uh, style of competitions and also the Kansas City Barbecue Society competitions, but there are other barbecue competition sanctioning bodies and, and networks and associations and so forth. And uh, Memphis and May or Memphis Barbecue Network is certainly uh, one of the other very, very large ones that a number of uh, well-known people compete in. And of course, uh, rounding out the show, know your cue for a two-pack of P.D. River Swamp Sauce donated by Tim at Swamp Sauce, and that's uh, swampsauce.com, P.D. River Swamp sauce. So there you go. number of things that I would uh, like to hit at this point, but uh, I don't know where we are as far as time-wise. Uh, but let me tell you this. Here's one thing that we continue, that we cannot continue to deny. And I brought this up uh, a few weeks ago, and this is the fact that the Barbecue Central Karma lives. And there is no better way of actually showing that that's true with the fact that that there was a KCBS competition took place in Franklin, Pennsylvania. And every single category was won by a Barbecue Central member. The Reserve Grand Champion was won by a Barbecue Central member. And the Grand Championship was won by a Barbecue Central member, that being DVQ, which I believe is now three for four in her uh, barbecue competitions this year, winning three out of four uh, Grand Champions. So... Congratulations to her. Congratulations to all Barbecue Central members. Remember, the karma lives, so it never does it not work. I'm still waiting to hear from Ron Hill about the karma he has for a couple weeks ago for a competition he was in last weekend. So we'll wait to hear. Maybe he'll uh, jump in. Again, 216-220-0966, bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. Visit the website, thebarbecuecentral.com. Email a friend. Tell him the show's on. When we come back, Fred Bernardo from Fred's Music. 
and barbecue. Scotty? You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. The Big Green Egg is the most unique barbecue and grilling product on the market with its unmatched capabilities and flexibility that surpass all other conventional cookers combined. It's a smoker, a grill, and an oven. You can literally cook any food on it year-round, from appetizers to entrees to desserts. The Big Green Egg lights fast, and it's ready to cook on within 10 minutes, and no need for that yucky lighter fluid. The ceramic walls retain heat with an accurate temperature control, so there are no hot spots. And since the top is down while you're cooking, there are no grease flare-ups. Its handsome, unique, and decorative design produces the juiciest and most succulent food you'll ever taste. And don't forget about the world-class customer service and the lifetime warranty that goes along with every unit. You can find out more about the Big Green Egg by visiting their website at biggreenegg.com. That's biggreenegg.com. The Big Green Egg, the most versatile and unique barbecue and grilling product on the market. Barbecue has never been easier with the Barbecue Guru. The Barbecue Guru is a temperature control and monitor for all pits, charcoal, wood, electric, your pit. It easily attaches to any smoker or pit and gives you simple, trouble-free control of your temperatures so you can make championship-quality barbecue every time and all the time. And it's location-free. Take it anywhere. This amazing breakthrough in barbecue technology is a microprocessor-controlled draft system that uses temperature monitors and a small fan to keep your temperatures constant. The stainless steel Guru Pit Miner gives you a choice of controls from 90 to 370 degrees. So cold smoking, pepper drying, making cheese or jerky or fabulous briskets and ribs is nothing short of effortless. The Procom 4 lets you monitor your pit from up to 600 feet away. And there's more. Check out the full line of products and accessories for the future of barbecue with new items on the way. Visit thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. This is Jimmy Burns from Melvern, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Central. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central show on LA Talk Radio. Barbecue Central Show on LA Talk Radio. Don't forget, coming up at the end of the show, know your cue for your chance to win a two pack of PD River Swamp Sauce Barbecue Sauce. Swampsauce.com, the place to go to find out more information about that. Thanks to Tim for donating. As promised, we're going to be uh, joining Fred Bernardo, which I believe is a uh, is Chillington, Pennsylvania, Fred. That's right, man. I'm in beautiful downtown Chillington, Pennsylvania, Greg. So here's uh, here's what we're talking about tonight. Like uh, a rapid disease, all of a sudden a post showed up on the Barbecue Central forum about a uh, stacker unit that you can get for your Weber Smoky Mountain. Now this is made by ProQ, and you are uh, one of the people that uh, actually shot a little video of it, uh, taking it out of the box. And so basically, what I wanted to do was, you know, obviously have you on since you've actually had your hands on it, you've seen what it's like, and put it together. And kind of, you know, what are your initial thoughts about this unit in general? Well, Greg, uh, it, it was everything we were expecting it to be. I hadn't actually had my hands on a unit until yesterday when I actually shot the video. That was uh, the first one in the country. And I had just gone to the warehouse and, you know, grabbed one off the stack before we started shipping uh, re- reservations. We had a lot of people that had reserved them in advance. And uh, it was, you know, everything we, I expected it to be. They, they have been available in Europe for a while. And I'm in close contact with Ian, the designer and the owner of the company. So it was, you know, exactly, exactly what I was expecting. Um, actually, the packaging was a little better than I was expecting and hoping for, which is good. Not that I'm not up on exactly what's happening out in the barbecue world, but how long have you been able to pre-order this unit? Well, I, I think we started taking orders a few months ago. Ian, uh, Ian McKenna is the owner of the company, and he, again, is in England, and he controls the distribution throughout throughout England and, and the rest of the, of the world, and had a few hiccups here getting to the United States market, and uh, was having some trouble getting distributors set up, had a few bad, maybe bad business deals, went a little bad, and just sort of hooked up with me. We got to be sort of friends and asked me if I would handle the distribution until he gets uh, a warehouse set up here 
and gets his uh, you know the dealerships all all handled and then after after which I'll handle the east coast but at the moment I am the sole retail outlet for this product and uh you know uh, we got we brought 56 of them in uh we pre-sold 50 and held six back uh, to use for parts and if we have a damaged unit or something but uh it's been a few months and uh you know they're they're on the way to the people right now so all the uh, all the orders that are in, pretty much everything you have in stock has already been spoken for and is is on their way out. The people have already ordered. Yep, everything has been spoken for, and we're you know working now on getting more into the country. Uh, I, I got to tell you, it's a, it's it's not the easiest thing bringing uh, you know getting used to bringing containers full of a product into the country. I you know needed to get some warehouse space and. And then in the end, we would have delivered by the 4th of July, but U.S. Customs decided they wanted to inspect our container to make sure there wasn't any nukes or anything in there. Set us back another couple of weeks and a couple thousand bucks. And uh, But, hey, they're here, and they're on their way to the people, and uh, they're, they're going to like them. It's a great little product. Now, Pro-Q has been out for a while with their, you know, with their own version of what looks like something similar to the Weber Smoky Mountain. I can't. I mean, there hasn't been a uh, a flurry of high praise on the on the Proku unit itself. It's small. Uh, it hasn't been necessarily proven in competition to win anything. Um, the stackability thing has always been kind of a unique feature, but I've never really heard anybody rant and rave about how great the Proku is. Much like uh, people always rant or always are talking about how great the Weber Smoky Mountain is. Now with this addition. Do you find it to be of the quality of a Weber Smoky Mountain as far as how it's made and, and how it fits together and all that stuff? Yeah, it looks like to be very similar, Greg. This this is sort of like, uh, you'd have to call this sort of like revision two, because simultaneous to this, uh, we also introduced the XL20, uh, which is the 20-inch smoker, the 20-inch water smoker, similar to the first unit, the Frontier, the little guy that came out. But now this is the big unit. Uh, the same gauge steel as the Weber, the same kind of coating as the Weber, very heavy grates. Everything's much, much heavier and substantial and bigger. And you probably didn't see those videos, but I posted them a few hours ago on the uh, on the smoker, the stacker units, and the new smoker. Is the uh, stacker unit for the WSM actually, in your opinion, a heavier gauge than the Weber Smoky Mountain itself? Uh, it's a, it is exactly the same gauge. It was made made exactly the same way with the same gauge metal. So that was that was part of the design spec on that unit to be exactly the same gauge because the earlier unit, which which was again a lower priced entry level thing, the Frontier, uh, you know, uses a thinner, lighter gauge. So it has gotten some criticism, but you know, at the price, it's still a very nice thing. All right, so let's break it down. I get the Weber Smoky Mountain stacker unit, which you sent me for free. That's just a, yeah. that, that's just a joke. Uh, how much actual <laughs> cooking space wish. exactly? How much does the how much actual cooking space is added by putting this unit on? You know, I didn't measure it, but it's about, I'd say this thing is about 10 inches high. You know, if you go to the website and look at the video, you can get a pretty good idea on the thing, but it's probably about 10 inches high. So it puts about another half again, you know, what the barrel of the Weber is, Mm -hmm. maybe another half again on top of there. And, you know, it has handles and things so you can lift it out, you know, lift it aside. Uh, it, It really does add some versatility. It also has a few other things. It has the eyelet hole already in there, uh, for temperature probes. You know, so he, he tried to, uh, Ian tried to design in all the things that people were tweaking, you know, on their Webers. A lot of people, uh, like on the virtual bullet form, you know, people have tweaks for Webers, and a lot of that is designed into this unit. What's the actual cooking grate size that you uh, put on? You know, you know, I didn't, I guess it's 18 inches because I think the Weber is 18 inches. Right. Now, the, and the new cooker then, of course, is 20 inches. Hmm. Now, are there add ons available for the, for the 20 inch as well yep yeah so that's when you when you buy the base unit you know there, there's a, a of course a base with a charcoal grate in it mm-hmm. and then a, then two stackers and the dome the dome has the thermometer it has the hook to hang if you want to hang jerky or something inside and then the stackers are available for that unit too so you can add one or two more on there you don't want to get too tall because it could be tip you know maybe tip over but it's a it's a pretty heavy unit so uh it's a tip there Still there, Fred? I think I lost you a little bit. No, oh, I'm here. Okay, I, I I'm here. Had a little audio drop on my end. I apologize for that. So, when was there any idea of when you would potentially be getting more units in? I mean, obviously there was a lot of buzz now that they're in. They're being shipped out. People are going to have reviews of people that had already pre-ordered. And assuming everything goes well, which we're anticipating they will, people are going to want to get their hands on them. Any idea of when you'll be getting more in the country? 
I, I think it's going to be uh, at least a month to two months, probably you know five or six weeks minimum. Uh, you know, it's very hard to predict these things, and there are, is a large order in production right now, and uh, I just don't know what the anticipated date of that is. You know, I'm I'm sort of at the long end of the of a long arm over here, but I am in contact with Ian every day, and we work very closely getting these things here. But I must tell you that. You know, I kept telling people dates, and, and I, I added a few weeks on to my initial projection, and I kept saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not the kind of guy, Greg, that promises things he can't control, you know. And I kept saying, you know, unless something happens, well, just about everything happened that could happen, <laughs> including that last inspection by customs. So, you know, but I, I think it's going to take a month, between a month and two months till there's any more of these units here in the country. And if it's oddly together, I saw on the video it just kind of dropped right in over, uh, you know, where the dome would sit on the lip. And it seemed pretty rock solid. Oh yeah, it is. And it drops. It you know it sits right on top, and then of course the dome sits on top of that. And you know has an access door. It has the eyelet hole again. You know to run your if you run a, like a Maverick thermometer, you can run the probe right through, or a Guru run the probe right through. So it, it, it's a nice thing. How, you know it it is a nice thing. What's the retail price on it? It's eighty nine ninety five is what we're taking the orders for. I, the original batch we, I did sell for seventy nine ninety five, but I, I must tell you, I you know really got kind of a stick up job here bringing these things into the country, and uh, we raised the price to eighty nine ninety five. When we can get a really big batch together, we might be able to bring it down. But you know, right now all the factors are against us for imported products. You know, the dollar is the dollar is way down, and even between the time I ordered and the time I got the products, the dollar dropped like four times. Right, and uh, it's you know makes it a little tough, but it, you know it's I, I think still a very reasonable price for the product. Absolutely, for the amount of uh, cooking capacity that you're increasing by, it's not like you're actually paying, you know, almost uh, an amount for what you would be getting a whole new Weber Smoky Mountain for. So that was going to be right. kind of my other question was you know where does the uh, the price quality ratio measure into eighty nine bucks for X versus buying a brand new one? But obviously, it's still uh, better to just get the stacker at this point. Well, if you if you have a Smoky Mountain and you really like your Weber, and and a lot of people do, and then of course for a good reason, really good reason, uh, you know, it's a nice thing. You know, you you want the, you want something to add on to your baby, you know. So this is a really really nice thing to to add on. And I must say, I, I you know we underestimated the amount of these things we put on that first order. We really should have put a lot more on. But you know, it becomes a money issue, and you know uh, the risk involved, etc. I'm just a little guy. You know, and uh, this this was a big project for me. Less than a minute, uh, two quick questions. Can you confirm or deny any rumors that there'll be a 26-inch Weber Smoky Mountain coming out here within 12 months or less? I, I don't know anything about it. I asked my Weber rep if there was a bigger Weber coming out, and he said there's a bigger one coming out. Where can... Bigger than the existing one. But, he, you know, he's on a really, really long end of a string there, you know? Right, right. And where can people go to find out more about you and uh, what you offer both in the music and on the barbecue side? Well, you can go to my website, Greg, at www.fredsmusicandbbqandbbq.com. And uh, if you click on videos, uh, sort of at the top of the page, there's some menus there. Click on videos. I have three videos that I posted in the last two days, and, uh, you know, you'll be able to see everything about these things. Fred Bernardo owns Fred's Music and Barbecue. Fred, appreciate you coming on tonight talking about the stacker for your uh, Weber Smoky Mountain and uh, all the other insight that you're able to add. Appreciate it, and we'll have you back on soon. Excellent, Greg. Thanks, buddy. Be in touch. Take care. Bye-bye. Fred Bernardo. Fred's Music and BBQ.com is the website. When we come back, we'll have Malcolm Reed from Killer Hogs talking about Memphis and May. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. Stand by. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. The Big Green Egg is the most unique barbecue and grilling product on the market with its unmatched capabilities and flexibility that surpass all other conventional cookers combined. It's a smoker, a grill, and an oven. You can literally cook any food on it year-round, from appetizers to entrees to desserts. The Big Green Egg lights fast, and it's ready to cook on within 10 minutes, and no need for that yucky lighter fluid. The ceramic walls retain heat with an accurate temperature control, so there are no hot spots. And since the top is down while you're cooking, there are no grease flare-ups. Its handsome, unique, and decorative design produces the juiciest and most succulent food you'll ever taste. And don't forget about the world-class customer service and the lifetime warranty that goes along with every unit. You can find out more about the Big Green Egg by visiting their website at biggreenegg.com. 
That's BigGreenEgg.com. The Big Green Egg, the most versatile and unique barbecue and grilling product on the market. The future of barbecue is already here at TheBarbecueGuru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a 3-Bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at TheBarbecueGuru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Hey, this is Helen Paradise from SoCal, and you are listening to the Barbecue Central Show. The phone lines are open on the Barbecue Central Show. Barbecue Central Show. Call 216-220-0966 to get on the air. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Barbecue Central Show on LA Talk Radio. End of the show, your chance to win a two pack of PD River Swamp Sauce Barbecue Sauce. Swampsauce.com sponsoring that. Thanks to Tim the Boys, as promised. Joining me right now, Malcolm Reed from Killer Hogs to talk a little Memphis in May or Memphis Barbecue Network or uh, whatever the proper name is uh, right now. Malcolm, thanks for coming on and I'd appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Greg. How are you tonight? I, uh, I'm not doing too bad. Evidently, I'm getting uh, uh, reports. Here and there that I cannot confirm or deny that our audio stream is kind of bumping in and out, but that's okay. I'm recording it from my side for uh, later review for uh, all the millions and millions of fans that I'm sure will be hitting us up here uh, over the period of time. But, uh, Malcolm, let's talk a little bit about uh, Memphis and May or Memphis Barbecue Network right now. But first, let's uh, get a little bit of background on you, how you got into barbecue, and when you actually started to get into competitions. Well, I've been around barbecue uh, pretty much all my life. My granddad always had big barbecues and it was just a family uh, get together kind of thing, and uh, we started competing in probably about '99. Me and my brother started up uh, Killer Hogs with another friend, and uh, we did the backyard division a couple times and started winning some trophies, and we just kind of went on from there, and it's grown and grown. And what year was that? Um, we did our first contest in '97. And then we kind of took it over ourselves and started running with it, I guess, in, in 2000. And ever since then, we've just been uh, bringing trophies home. Now, admittedly, I've really done the majority of my interviews here on Barbecue Central Show with uh, people from Kansas City Barbecue Society uh, or you know, folks from the M- uh, FBA or, or similar type uh, judging and competition setups. But uh, Memphis and May or Memphis Barbecue Network is something that is completely different. Uh, it's its own uh, sanctioning body running its own contest. So for those that don't know, can you explain a little bit how a Memphis event differs from something we might all be a little bit more familiar with, which would be like a Kansas City or a Florida Barbecue Association event? Yeah, well, the main thing is we, we have a first round of blind judging, just like KCBS or any of the other networks. And then right after your blind judge, you can go have three judges actually come on site one right after the other. And they spend 15 minutes with you, and you basically just explain your picking process to them. And they tally those scores, the combined on site and the blind scores. Now, if you make the top three after that, you have a whole other round of judging. So basically, it's three rounds that, that they uh, score. And what? Uh, and you're cooking what? Uh, what in particular, like meat categories? They have. Uh, what we call the whole hog, um, whole shoulder, and uh, ribs. That's the three categories. No brisket and no chicken. No brisket, no chicken. Now, most of the contests you'll find, they'll have ancillary contests, and that's usually where you find your beef and poultry and seafood, things like that. But as far as the MBN, Memphis and May style goes, it's just pork, pork only. Is, there, uh, is that just the way it's always been, or is there any reason why they don't include like a chicken or a brisket as, as part of the actual competition itself? 
that's the way it's always been since its uh, since its conception here in Memphis. I mean, Memphis is known for pork barbecue, and it started out with people bragging on their barbecue. Their pork barbecue was better than somebody else's, so they had a, uh, four or five teams, and they said, "Well, let's go down here in the parking lot by the river and we'll have a cook off and see who wins." And that's you know, twenty so years ago, Memphis and May was born, and that's how it's kind of developed from then. And now it's just uh, grown into a big network where it's branching all over. I mean, there's contests in New Hampshire. Uh, we just competed over in Virginia, and we'll go to Missouri here in a few weeks. And, I mean, they're just all over the southeast, basically. I heard there's going to be uh, one over in Indiana here uh, not too uh, not too short time either. Yeah, and they're actually, you know, they're doing a combined event with the KCBS. I think it's in Murfreesboro, Illinois, I want to say. Yeah. It's going to be a KCBS and an NBN ran at the same time, and it is possible to cook both 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 categories, I guess you'd say. Yeah, Mike uh, Mike Mills did make mention of that last week, so I thought that was kind of interesting to actually get a competition where you can do uh, both both aspects. Yeah, well, what the NBN is really trying to do they're not just wanting to seclude themselves kind of the way Memphis and May was, where it's just Memphis and May. They're wanting to bring barbecue together as a whole community, um, bring all the, you know, the different forms in as far as people getting, you know, KCBS involved with MBN, involved with Florida in different sanctioning bodies, which I think it's a real good thing. Now, I've talked to, I talked a little bit about this last week. Um, do you find that the Memphis-style barbecuers – uh, choose to cook more on well, you know what we would term a more wet or more humid cooking environment than uh, than the dry guys, or is that just more of a, an internet misconception? Well, you know, I think it's really um, you find both. I mean, you'll find you'll find guys out there that cook nothing but dry, and then you'll find a lot of them using the backwood smoker type cookers. It's, it's a moist environment. That's what we use. We use nothing but backwoods, and that's just how we prefer it. I've just found that it's easier. I mean, the water actually acts as a, a barrier water pan and, you know, it insulates your smoker and just allows you to control your temperature. It just takes one of the problems out. I mean, if you can control your temperature, you can control a lot of other things easy, you know, your heat and your smoke, and it just allows you to take more time with your meat instead of having to fight your fire. Had you always used backwood smokers, or did you uh, try a bunch of them out and then decide on uh, Mike McGowan's creation? Well, we started out with just a, like a side-by-side, like your typical Smoky Joe or something you'd get at Lowe's or Home Depot, and then um, moved on and, you know, tried to Weber Smoky Mountains, and uh, went, we don't have a green egg that I keep out back, but I just found that backwoods consistently lets me cook um, the meat exactly the way I want to every time. Now, there had been some changes that, you know, had happened probably over the last uh, 12, 16 months where, uh, you know, MIM kind of disbanded and then regrouped as uh, what I believe is now is Memphis Barbecue Network. Can you give me a little insight as to, you know, what actually happened and maybe what changes have taken place since then uh, and how they've affected, you know, competitions, if at all? Yeah, well, really, I mean, the biggest thing that I've noticed is that the, the organizers that were doing all the volunteer work for Memphis and May have really took over this MBN. Um, as far as Memphis and May, you know, making a statement or anything, what what was going on, they really didn't, they left everybody in the dark. They just kind of sent out a letter that basically said that they were going to focus on Memphis and May and they weren't going to sanction contests anymore. Well, it kind of left a lot of these uh, teams like myself, you know, out in the dark. We didn't know what was going on. And then uh, the MBN stepped in and just did a great job. I believe they have uh, 60 contests uh, sanctioned next year already, so it's really looking good. And how many competitions are you competing on any given year? Um, well, we try to do a dozen. That's good for us. I mean, that's that's pretty heavy. I mean, we still work full-time jobs and just a bunch of friends. We're not a big-time sponsor-wise team or anything, have any restaurants or anything behind us. It's just guys having a good time on my end we've just been fortunate enough to really put out some good product and have some luck but what we found lately that if uh, we go to a contest and we get a few calls we'll uh you know take on a little money and we'll start looking at the next one down the road and that's kind of how we're going right now kind of reinvesting uh, back into the machine yeah that's uh, (laughs) that's exactly what we do just keep it rolling and Hopefully one day we'll be as big as some of these guys that have made big-time names for themselves. No doubt. Now, uh, where can people go to learn a little bit more about you and about uh, the Killer Hogs Barbecue Competition Cooking Team? Um, you can visit us on our website at uh, killerhogs.com. 
we have a MySpace page as well, but uh, if you'd like to go check it out, it's www.killerhogs.com. We'd love to hear from you. Cool. Malcolm, I appreciate you coming on tonight, talking a little bit about uh, Memphis in May uh, and the Memphis Barbecue Network, how those competitions uh, are kind of set up versus some of the other ones that we've talked about here on the show. I uh, appreciate your time and uh, definitely want to have kind of a round table that might pit a cooking style against another. Uh, certainly love to give you a holler and see if you'd be interested in coming back on. Yeah, Greg, anytime. I'd, I'd, I'd love to talk about it. Uh, one more main thing I'd like to get across, one of the bigger points about the uh, NBN style is that we have to buy a lot more meat, and that's that's kind of the bigger thing, I think, other than Kansas City, is that we have to, you know, our food cost is a lot more. So it, it does take a little more on that end. If, if you got people that's wanting to get into it, we cook Kansas City contests too. We just... Uh, we try to focus on these because they're closer to us. But uh, both of them are real great styles, and I, I love cooking Kansas City as much as I do MBN. But I just wanted to say that MBN right now is where we're trying to focus our attention. All right, Malcolm. Uh, appreciate it and continued success. All right. Thank you very much, Greg. Take care. Malcolm Reed, Killer Hogs. I did want to touch on that uh, price thing. Got to get out. When we come back, know your cue. Stand by. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. Barbecue has never been easier with the Barbecue Guru. The Barbecue Guru is a temperature control and monitor for all pits, charcoal, wood, electric, your pit. It easily attaches to any smoker or pit and gives you simple, trouble-free control of your temperatures so you can make championship-quality barbecue every time and all the time. And it's location-free. Take it anywhere. This amazing breakthrough in barbecue technology is a microprocessor-controlled draft system that uses temperature monitors and a small fan to keep your temperatures constant. The stainless steel Guru Pit Minder gives you a choice of controls from 90 to 370 degrees. So cold smoking, pepper drying, making cheese or jerky or fabulous briskets and ribs is nothing short of effortless. The Procom 4 lets you monitor your pit from up to 600 feet away. And there's more. Check out the full line of products and accessories for the future of barbecue with new items on the way. Visit thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. The Big Green Egg is the most unique barbecue and grilling product on the market with its unmatched capabilities and flexibility that surpass all other conventional cookers combined. It's a smoker, a grill, and an oven. You can literally cook any food on it year-round, from appetizers to entrees to desserts. The Big Green Egg lights fast, and it's ready to cook on within 10 minutes, and no need for that yucky lighter fluid. The ceramic walls retain heat with an accurate temperature control, so there are no hot spots. And since the top is down while you're cooking, there are no grease flare-ups. Its handsome, unique, and decorative design produces the juiciest and most succulent food you'll ever taste. And don't forget about the world-class customer service and the lifetime warranty that goes along with every unit. You can find out more about the Big Green Egg by visiting their website at BigGreenEgg.com. That's BigGreenEgg.com. The Big Green Egg, the most versatile and unique barbecue and grilling product on the market. This is Jim Minion from Two Loose Screws. I'm listening to Barbecue Central. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. Barbecue Central Show on LA Talk Radio. Thanks to Malcolm Reed from Killer Hogs for coming on. Talking about the uh, Memphis Barbecue Network and all that is good with that, how that differs. And uh, I, again, uh, got out real quick there at the end, uh, just running out of time, but I did want to talk to him about how uh, the meat buying uh, and how that differs from uh, some of the other competition barbecue places out there because I know uh, they have the big stages and the, and the big setups, a lot of meat, all that good stuff. Uh, so uh, perhaps uh, at another point, another time, we will uh, get Malcolm back up to talk about exactly you know how the meat buying differs and, and the quantities and all that good stuff. Uh, but first, we'll race to the phones. Barbecue Central Radio, name and where you're calling from. James, Keith calling out, Florida. Hey, James, what's up tonight? Well, I was trying to catch you while he was on the phone. I wanted to do, I know that Memphis in May was changing when I done the competition last year in Florida. And they said it was going to be MBN, and I just need to, I'm trying to find a, a website for it. Well, I'll tell you what I can do. I will uh, shoot you Malcolm's uh, email address, and you can correspond with him privately and out of the uh, out of the public vision. 
Yeah, that worked, Greg. I just need to, I wanted to, you know, I mean, they're not doing the, the Memphis and May here or Memphis Barbecue Network and Green Cup this year, so I don't have a competition in Florida. I ain't found one yet. Hmm. Well, let me uh, hook you up with him, and he might be able to steer you in the right direction. Okay, Greg, and uh, one more question. I'll put some uh, new picks up on the trailer tonight, so when you get time, just take a look at it, man. All right, buddy. All right. Take care. Thank you. James in Keystone, Florida, a regular listener who I appreciate listening. Where's my rant card at? Got a little time, so I can get loose a little bit here. Oh, uh, the uh, Know Your Q segment tonight is going to be uh, one of, uh, of ease. No need to know anything about the show tonight. I will uh, pick random caller. Uh, so let's say caller number five or caller number three, and I'll tell you when to start calling in, and uh, we can go from there. So the correct number caller, just by sheer luck, will win a two-pack of P.D. River Swamp Sauce. Swampsauce.com is a place to go to find out more about them. And they are, by the way, the official winner of the barbecue, barbecue sauce competition held on the Barbecue Central Forum, the bbqcentral.com. So I do want to tell, uh, tell everybody that Tim has a great sauce recommend that you try it even if you don't win it definitely worth the buy uh i keep it stocked in the house so that should tell you something so uh i got off a little bit on the uh the karma rant again it's good to be a part of the barbecue central community if you're a competitor if you're a caterer anything everything good happens to barbecue central members uh franklin pennsylvania uh, again proof positive that barbecue central karma lives and any one of those people could call in and be a witness, be a testimonial to the fact that the karma never doesn't work. Maybe you uh, heard this over the weekend. <clears throat> Budweiser sells to a Belgian company. The company's called InBev for $52 billion. Now, perhaps I should uh, backtrack a little bit. Uh, maybe they didn't sell out, per se. It was a, you know, a corporate takeover. Uh, I mean, is it just me? What isn't sacred anymore? Budweiser Beer is no longer an American company for 100 plus years, brewed right there uh, in, I think they have uh, four or five different breweries uh, across the country. There is a brewery uh, two hours south of me from Cleveland here in Columbus, Ohio, state capital. The concept that Budweiser and its brands, and whether you like them or you don't, is completely insignificant at this point. But the fact that Budweiser is not going to be an American-owned company and that somebody else could potentially stick their dirty fingers in any number of recipes to screw up how that beer tastes, although sureties were given that jobs would uh, stay as they are, that breweries would stay open, blah, blah, blah. It only takes somebody to decide to put a little bit more yeast here or a little bit more hops here to ruin everything and i don't feel very good to be honest that a that some other country is in charge of anheuser-busch budweiser beer and their respective brands that really really gets me full hot on the deal i mean can you imagine how is that not american anymore i'm very perturbed i am by the way one of the biggest Budweiser marks out there. I love Budweiser beer. It's in my house all the time. I love it. But perhaps, uh, perhaps I need to to look elsewhere back within the country now. Kind of uh, coupled in with that is the fact that uh, Yankee Stadium will be uh, torn down this year. Yankee Stadium, a staple, a monument of baseball greatness. Now the stadium is gone. It's only a matter of time before Fenway Park will be torn down and Wrigley Field will be torn down. Uh, aside from its ancientness, why, why would you want to tear down this portion of history, Yankee Stadium and Budweiser Beer? To me, it's a hand in hand. You couldn't have had two bigger uh, blows as far as I'm concerned to know that this is the last season that the Yankees will be playing baseball in the house that Ruth built versus the to-be house that George built. 
What is happening? What is happening? All right, lastly, I did want to mention uh, two weeks ago we had the roundtable about uh, preferential bias and garnish. And uh, we had Jim Minion on and Rod Gray and Kevin Bevington from HomeBBQ.com. I still think uh, that this is a, an issue that should continually be addressed. And uh, whether it's a, a, a something that is more Internet-driven or maybe it's a subject that isn't nearly covered enough, that isn't nearly brought up enough at competitions, at sanctioning body uh, board member meetings and so forth. And here's what I'm talking about. The inherent problem with competition barbecue is simply this. If you're going to be competing, you have to turn in what is winning. So that initial statement seems very uh, basic. Well, yeah, well, why wouldn't you? Well, because maybe you want to get outside the box. Maybe you want to do something that... Uh, is going to get the judge's attention. Yet it is recommended or told specifically that you don't want to get too far outside the box. All you need to worry about is the fact that if is the entry legal or not, yes. Can you eat it? Yes. Regardless of its pulled chicken or chicken thighs uh, or, uh, I mean, whatever. As long as the entry fits and is legal, and is not disqualified because it's not the norm, because it's not not what winning should not disqualify you or put you at a disadvantage because a judge is expecting something else, something that is winning. And that is a problem, and that is what is going to be continually holding back the growth of the sport in this host's opinion. Especially... Me categories withheld altogether. The fact that garnish is optional is completely outlandish to me. To have this gray area, and this is pointed at nobody in particular, by the way, but the fact that there is this gray area of garnish isn't included, but everybody that's winning is doing it. What the hell does that mean? If it's not optional then it shouldn't, even, it shouldn't even count against you. Nor should it count uh, ahead for a team that garnishes a box very well. Forget your portrait. Forget your picture. To me, you either need to have it as not, not an option, but mandatory. And that way teams take the time to learn how to garnish the box right, how to mix lettuce and parsley or do an all-parsley box, or whatever the case may be. But to have it as a mandatory, as much as chicken and ribs and pork, shoulder and brisket is mandatory to turn in at competition time, you would have to have a garnish that is competition uh, that is mandatory to turn in the competitions. Or you do away with it altogether. Put a sheet underneath to sop up the sauce or whatever. It's a meat contest. Period. End of story. No garnish. No optional garnish. And forget about what is winning is what you want to be seeing in the box. That has to be corrected. I invite your emails and your ass kickings. Again, my opinion. Feel differently? Certainly open for phone calls. Caller number three right now wins a two-pack of P.D. River Swamp Sauce. Caller number three. As we have uh, about a minute left to go, so uh, the phone lines, no doubt, will uh, will light very quickly up here. Two one six two two zero zero nine six six is the number to call in. Two one six two two zero zero nine six six. Caller number three wins. The Barbecue Central Forum's choice is Barbecue Sauce winner of the uh, competition that we had last year. PD River, no, PD, sw- PD River Swamp Sauce Barbecue Sauce. Graciously donated by Tim at Swamp Sauce. SwampSauce.com is a place to go to learn more about PD River Swamp Sauce. 216 220 0966. 
and we'll take the, uh, the third caller. Call now. Barbecue Central, your caller number one. Loser. There was caller number one. Now we need uh, caller number two to call in for a chance to win PD River. Swamp sauce, barbecue sauce. There we go. Another call coming in, I'm sure. Any second? I got to do something better with this last segment, to be honest. That's all right. All right. Good enough for me. Good enough for you. That two-pack will carry over to next week, and we can push this giveaway out for another two weeks. I want to thank my guest tonight, Fred Bernardo from Fred's Music and BBQ.com for talking about the Weber Smoky Mountain stacker option or addition that Pro-Q makes for your Weber Smoky Mountain. Thanks to Fred for that. Also, thanks to Malcolm Reed from Killer Hogs talking about the Memphis and May or the Memphis Barbecue Network style of competitions. And uh, we will have him on soon enough to talk about uh, meat costs and all that good stuff as well. Thanks to the emailers. Thanks to the callers. Thanks to the Barbecue Central crew, Sam Hassan, for running the sound in Los Angeles, California. Don't forget the broads are up after me at 10 o'clock. We'll see you back here next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For the Barbecue Central show, this is your program host, Greg Rempe. Good night now. The Big Green Egg is the most unique barbecue and grilling product on the market with its unmatched capabilities and flexibility that surpass all other conventional cookers combined. It's a smoker, a grill, and an oven. You can literally cook any food on it year-round, from appetizers to entrees to desserts. The Big Green Egg lights fast, and it's ready to cook on within 10 minutes, and no need for that yucky lighter fluid. The ceramic walls retain heat with an accurate temperature control, so there are no hot spots. And since the top is down while you're cooking, there are no grease flare-ups. Its handsome, unique, and decorative design produces the juiciest and most succulent food you'll ever taste. And don't forget about the world-class customer service and the lifetime warranty that goes along with every unit. You can find out more about the Big Green Egg by visiting their website at BigGreenEgg.com. That's BigGreenEgg.com. The Big Green Egg, the most versatile and unique barbecue and grilling product on the market. Barbecue has never been easier with the Barbecue Guru. The Barbecue Guru is a temperature control and monitor for all pits, charcoal, wood, electric, your pit. It easily attaches to any smoker or pit and gives you simple, trouble-free control of your temperatures so you can make championship-quality barbecue every time and all the time. And it's location-free. Take it anywhere. This amazing breakthrough in barbecue technology is a microprocessor-controlled draft system that uses temperature monitors and a small fan to keep your temperatures constant. The stainless steel Guru Pit Miner gives you a choice of controls from 90 to 370 degrees. So cold smoking, pepper drying, making cheese or jerky or fabulous briskets and ribs is nothing short of effortless. The Procom 4 lets you monitor your pit from up to 600 feet away. And there's more. Check out the full line of products and accessories for the future of barbecue with new items on the way. Visit thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU.